Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we'll be learning about another concept which is inner automorphism. So, in order to understand inner automorphism, we have already studied about isomorphisms, right? We have already studied about automorphisms. Now, what is this inner automorphism? So, let's have a look at this term. So here, uh, as for an example, we already know the group, uh, special linear group of order 2, right? It is consisting of all matrices having order 2 cross 2 and all the entries are taken from the set of real numbers. This group uh, is having the matrices such that the determinant is equal to 1. So if we select some uh, matrix M of such kind, which is 2 cross 2 real matrix with determinant 1, then we can define a mapping by associating this M to this mapping phi. So we have phi of M is equal to G varying from G to G, right? Such that phi M of A is equal to M A M inverse for all A which are member of G. So that means here in this case, what we are doing, we are fixing this M here and corresponding to this, we are defining this mapping. So obviously you can see this is from defined from the same group to the same group. So therefore it is definitely an automorphism when we, when we know it is already an isomorphism. So in the previous videos, if you remember, I have proved that this phi of M is an isomorphism. We have proved that this is 1, 1. We have proved that this is on 2 and it is also uh, operation preserving, right? It follows all these three properties so therefore this is an isomorphism and moreover it is defined from the same group to the same group so therefore it, it is an automorphism as well now what about inner automorphism so making use of definition of this kind we will define or inner automorphism so this is an automorphism and uh, it is uh, why this is so because this is an isomorphism from the same group to the same group now this kind of automorphism that arises so often that we give it a special name and a notation and that special name is nothing but this inner automorphism right what is it this is inner automorphism so let's have a look uh, and, uh, and give a proper formal definition of this inner automorphism and how we will define it for this again what we will do we will fix some element here in this example we have fixed the data uh, matrix m right so let's call that particular element to be the element a we are fixing this element so for this we say if g is given to be some group and a is some member of this group g this we have fixed right then corresponding to this element a we have a different mapping so uh, there obviously by this you will say that uh, we have a as many mappings as many elements would be present in g right we keep on doing like this obviously this that would be there but we will see what are the conditions uh, which make the mappings as inner or automorphism so as for now we take some element a keep it fixed and for this a we define the function phi of a such that when we apply phi of a onto some element of g we would have a x a inverse for all x which are member of this g if we define phi in such a way then we call this to be inner automorphism which is induced by a the element a of the group g right okay and for the notation we use i double n i capital i small double n uh, in brackets we write g so this represents we have automorphism from the group g to the group g and this in represents here we are talking about inner isomorphism so this i n n of g this represents the set of all inner automorphisms of the group g right so it will consist of all such mappings which form inner automorphisms of the group g so the next question is how do we then uh, define an inner automorphism of some group so what is the procedure in particular suppose if we take dihedral group d4 how do we proceed so uh, let's have a look here for the dihedral group, we already know the elements are R0, R90, R180, 
आर टू सेवेंटी एच वी डी एंड डी डैश एंड द ऑपरेशन इज कॉम्पोजिशन सो ही आर इन ऑर्डर टू डिफाइन दिस इनर ऑटोमोर्फिजम वी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हैव टू सेलेक्ट एन एलिमेंट लेट्स कॉल दैट एलिमेंट एस आर नाइनटी वी सेलेक्ट दिस एलिमेंट फ्रॉम दिस ग्रुप वी मे सेलेक्ट डिफरेंट एलिमेंट ऑल्सो बट फॉर नाउ लेट एस कंसिडर दिस आर नाइनटी नाउ कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग टू दिस आर नाइनटी वी मे डिफाइन एन इनर ऑटोमोर्फिजम हाउ by defining some mapping phi ax now what by definition by fixing a in this case we have a as r90 so in this case our mapping would become r90 times some element x times r90 inverse right so uh, this is how we define our mapping in this case so for all the elements x which are this all the members of this x right we apply this r9 2 on to it so what would be our phi of, of r90 of x it would be r90 x r90 inverse so let's have a look what do we have for different elements for different elements for say r0 we have r90 r0 r90 inverse which is what which is nothing but r0 only that means you have this square with u right we first of all rotate it 90 degree by in the clockwise direction inverse means we are rotating in the, it, it in the clockwise direction and then we are doing nothing and then we are again rotating in by 90 degree in the anti clockwise direction so what do we have uh, the overall effect would be null so that means we have not performed anything so that would correspond to r0 only similarly r90 would mean rotating for it first uh by rotating this square first of all by uh, in anti clockwise direction by 90 degree then again by 90 degree then uh, by uh, 90 degree in the clockwise direction so you see both of them they cancel each other so the final effect is r90 only correct so we have r90 only for the next case uh, we have r90 so we are rotating it anti clockwise by r90 then r180 we are rotating it by 180 in the clockwise direction and then r90 degree in the clockwise direction so you see this much effect is cancelled so therefore we are left with thus this much effect so how much is it it is r180 so the answer is r180 similarly for r270 you have the uh, answer as r270 next for the elements h v d and d dash what what does this h represents this h represents that we have a horizontal shift so that means one would come here and four would go there Two would come here and three would come here. So when we rotate it first of all by ninety degree, so what would happen? Uh, we would have the elements like this: four here, one here, two here, three here, right? After uh, uh, after rotating it by ninety degree, then we apply this. a uh, horizontal shift to it by applying horizontal shift to it we have four here three here one here and two here then we again rotate it 90 degree in the clockwise direction so in this direction by 90 degree so what do we have uh, we have three here four here one here and two here so you see finally we we started with this thing and we reached at this thing so what kind of uh, what kind of uh, flip or rotation it is you see we have a vertical uh, flip here the one goes to 2 and 2 goes to 1 that is what is happening here 4 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4 that is what is happening here so therefore the final result is this v in a similar manner we have for v we have for d and we have for d dash the results are for v we have h for d we have d dash right and for d dash we have t what is v uh, it is reflection along the vertical axis d is reflection along the main diagonal d dash is reflection along the other diagonal right so this is how we obtain all the different elements under the mapping r uh, phi of r 90 degree right so when we apply it on x we have these different elements under this mapping so basically this phi of uh, r 90 A degree this forms an inner automorphism right this forms an inner automorphism of d4 of the group d4 uh, under the element r90 in a similar manner you can ha calculate different mappings by taking different such elements 
so i hope you understood this example when and well and uh, also understood this definition of inner automorphism induced by a well that is it for this video thank you for watching